Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my first LP of 2013. I apologise it's taken almost two weeks for me to start on a new LP, but uh, I just want to make sure I get everything right. Um, today, I uh, shall be playing for you, as you can quite clearly see, Bare Knuckle 3, which most of you will know as Streets of Rage 3 in the West. Uh, what's particular about this version is that it's the Japanese version, but with an English translation. And... Um, Oh, look, we got it on hard already, so that's a good thing. <laughs> that's Because that's what we want it on, because I could go to very hard, but that's just going to make the game longer than what it is. And to be honest with you, very hard on the Japanese version, it's easier than normal on the Western version. So we'll just stick with hard for the time being, and that's pretty much the only option we're going to change. But yeah, this is the Japanese version with the English translation, and I've pretty much I'm going to choose to play the Japanese version over the Western version because there are just certain aesthetics about the Japanese version that I prefer over the Western version, and plus all the voices have been carried over literally from Streets of Rage 2, so there's no, practically no changes there. So um, and the story makes a lot more sense than the Japanese version as opposed to the Western version. So um, let us begin. One player. All right, we've got our. Uh, Usual. Let's start again. We've got our usual uh, Streets of Rage regulars. We've got Axe and Blaze, uh, these st series mainstays. We've got Sammy returning from Streets of Rage 2, as we know him as Skate. We've got newcomer Doctor Zan, who is uh, integral to the game's story, and that's it. And um, those of you that play Streets of Rage 2 regularly will probably notice the fifth character on the character select screen, because you'll probably think to yourself, "Ems, what's with the kangaroo on the on the character select screen?" Well, this, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, is Victi. Uh, he's known in the West as Rue, which is a little bit more of a... a um, it, it's an obvious and predictable, but at the same time, it's a, a, an appropriate name, because he's a kangaroo, obviously. Uh, there are two ways to get him in this game. Legitimately, what you do... It, it, there's a legitimate way, which is um, in the middle of the game, and the way that I've chosen to do it, slightly cheesy a little bit, is that you hold up and B, uh, when I say B, I mean B on the Mega Drive pad. When I say the controls throughout this game, I'm referring to the Mega Drive pad, so I uh, apologise to anybody who's playing this on anything other than a Mega Drive. <laughs> yeah, um, but to get him on the character select screen, you hold up and B on the title screen, where it says Bare Knuckle 3, and you just press start on a uh, one player. That should actually unlock him straight away. And, you know what guys, just for the purposes of this LP, you know, whenever I play Switch Rage 3, I normally pick um, Axel, because it's what I'm com it's who I'm comfortable with, and it's who I always play as throughout the entire series. But, you know, for the purposes of this LP, I'm going to have a laugh with it, I don't care, yeah, and I've waffled on too much anyway, I'm going to pick Victi, aka Rue. In fact, I'm probably going to, excuse me, I'm probably going to call him Rue now for the rest of the, um, from the rest of the LP, because it's, it's actually what I'm used to calling him, so, let's -a go! Oh, and by the way, uh, any references you see in this game that say uh, Rakushin, uh, that's actually a transliteration from the Japanese. What it's meant to say is Laxine. That's the name of the element that's involved in this game. So remember, Rakushin equals Laxine. Alright, <coughs> let's begin. Round one. And right at the very start of the game, um, there's an extra life and some points, so yay! And in normal Streets of Rage fashion, we're greeted with our first set of punks, but in, in unfamiliar, um, what should I say, in a, a slightly new move, we've got uh, two brand new types of punk. 
we've got that fella there with the baseball cap and we've got the uh, the Goldilocks um, punks and of course we've got some new females as well these are females that are unarmed and they actually are pretty good although we can still beat them of course um, one of the aesthetic differences between um, the Japanese version and the Western version uh, especially where these girls are concerned is that they're slightly more um, uh, they, they're wearing slightly more revealing clothing in this version than, it, than they do in the uh, the Western version because they're slightly covered up in the um, well I say slightly covered up they're more or less completely covered up in the Western version you know, the only flesh that you can see is their um, is their faces and that's it um, I don't know if you noticed a few seconds ago on the far right hand side of the screen where one of the girls was actually sorting out her hair that animation is completely missing from the western version I never understood why but you know it's just one of those weird changes that um, I don't know, the west began we've got ourselves a little apple there which um, doesn't restore your health fully but it restores it partially so it's always a good thing if you just want a quick health up and of course you saw there the, uh, the denim clad white haired uh, red haired guy our usual uh, Garcia punk well I say Garcia but his proper name is Garcia it's been I don't know why but the Japanese always seem to mistranslate Garcia as Garcia anyway that's enough for the <laughs> for talking about the uh, the enemies and the aesthetic differences we haven't spoken about this little kangaroo that I'm playing as uh, yeah Rue he appears um, he appears a little bit later on in the game and he's part of, and that's part of the legitimate way of unlocking him but as a character he's alright I mean he's got his little um, shall we say, uh, I was gonna say his dash move but the proper move is called blitz move he's got that which involves him uh, sp uh, skating on his head <laughs> that's got that's gotta hurt at some point let's run run were those punks gonna do like a macho man Randy Savage on a kangaroo I mean really they do know how powerful kangaroos are, don't they? <laughs> anyway, he's got his little bits move, he does that. And he's got his little back attack, which involves him poking his tail, as you can see. A la, a, like a knife, like Garcia just tried to do to us. Uh, for some reason, that's a weird back attack, because it also counts as a front attack as well. If I can... There we go, look at that. That's going to come in handy a little bit later on. He's obviously got his fly kick as well. And obviously, when you saw him do his little grapple attack, you know, he jumps behind his opponent and he starts kicking the shit out of him. I mean, I don't know how hard a kangaroo's kick is, and I don't think I really want to find out, but... I can imagine it's quite hard, especially when it's, when the kangaroo's kicking you in your balls. Oh! 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 And that's one of the tricks I'm glad that I know how to do on this game. Whenever you get thrown, you know, you press up and C while you're in the air. And we've got that fella called Bronze, and the, uh, the Z... Uh, I was gonna say the Z is missing, but the Z isn't missing. It's the E that's missing. I love doing this little trick here. It, it, it's, it's, it's an almost infinite punch. I, infinite? What kind of word is that? Infinite punch. There we go. Oh, didn't we realize I killed Bronze off straight away? <laughs> oh, what second part? And there's another Garcia. And there's our uh, series staple, Fat Bloke. Alright, Fat Bloke. Did you enjoy Christmas dinner, did ya? I tell you, I'll give you good props if you actually recognize what that quote was from. Um, I, I don't know how many of you out there probably will. I, I obviously don't mean that to be um, condescending, but um, I, I am of a certain age, and certain people my age will probably understand that um, that um, uh, that reference that I made. All right. And obviously, I, that I'm English as well because this program was only aired in um, in uh, Britain, so I don't know if it aired worldwide. I doubt it, but you you never know. Anyway, enough waffling on about English programs and references. I've got a bloody LP to play. Now, I really, 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 really love Streets of Rage 3. I go so far as to say, and this is going to sound slightly controversial, and I really don't care if it does. Um, everyone has their own opinions and everything, but I think that Streets of Rage 3 is much better than Streets of Rage 2. I mean, look, you can run, you can do, you can, you know, get out of the way, sideways and all that. And one thing Streets of Rage, you know, 3 has, that Streets of Rage 2 doesn't, but Streets of Rage 1 does, is when you attack, you can still move forward. You're not paralysed to the spot, unlike Streets of Rage 2. And that, for me, that completely disrupts the flow, and I really don't like that. You know, if I'm attacking someone, I still want to be moving. I want to move towards them. 
Oh, well, there we go. I thought the motorcycles weren't going to come. <laughs> Normally, what I do with the motorcycle bits is I just stand here in the corner because there's no real reason to get into um, to get into a fight with the motorcycles if they're just going to whiz right past you. Uh, well, I don't think it's a good idea somehow to uh, do your little uh, blitz move on the on the um, on the tarmac. I'm just saying, you know, because you're not going to have much of a skull left after that. Oh, here come the motorcycles. I don't know. Uh, this, these motorcycle bits, they always remind me of an old Taito arcade game called Renegade. There's a bit in the second level where uh, you start off and there's motorcycles coming toward, the, towards you. And you got to knock the, um, the cyclists off. One move I like about Ruse, I'll, I'll wait for the, um, I'll wait for the power-up for to charge. Uh, that's what I, was, I forgot to explain about that, actually. Uh, those of you that have played Street of Rage 2 will always... Fuck! Fuck it! Stop punching me! Stop doing the infinite punch attack on me! Uh, those of you that play Switch of Rage 2, uh, we've got the signal punks, excellent. Their slide attack is fucking nasty, I mean, that's hard to avoid. I mean, the attack range on that lingers. It's, I hate it. It's like you think the move's complete, but nope, it's still active. Anyway, as I was talking about, um, those of you that play Switch of Rage 2 will know that pressing the A button, uh, they, they have a little attack, something like that. It's pretty much a get out clause, a get out attack, a get the fuck off me attack, shall we say. <laughs> if you're being held and you can get out of any kind of hold. Now, unfortunately on Street of Rage 2 though, you, every time you did that it took up a small section of energy. So you had to uh, use it conservatively, shall we say. But in Street of Rage 3, in place of the timer, you've got that little meter there that's got OK flashing. That's your, uh, that's your blitz move meter. Once that's full, oh, oh, I like the flashing effect going on there. Although I hope that kind of showed up in the video. No, my lucky probably didn't. But yeah, uh, once that's full up, um, full up to OK, you could do your uh, your special attack. Did I say blitz move meter earlier? I'm sorry, I, I did just mean special attack meter because you can do your blitz move infinitely as fucking long as you like. <laughs> now your special attack meter. Once that's filled up to OK, he says for the third time, uh, you can do your special attack without. Your energy to be depleted. Although, if you do your special attack uh, whilst the meter is being filled, then you will actually take a chunk of energy uh, uh, according to how much of the um, how much of the meter has already been filled. I mean, if it's on like if it's nearly full, then you won't take off so much energy. But if, it, if you do it straight after you, you know you do that and there's nothing there, then you're going to take a lot of damage. And ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Ash. <laughs> This little sub-boss was removed from the Western version because, as you can quite clearly see, he's a gay stereotype. He's got the... Oh, I didn't know he did that move! <laughs> I mean, I knew he slammed you down, but I didn't know he did that move. But yeah, uh, he was removed from the Western uh, versions, obviously to, um, I assume, to avoid uh, uh, causing offence and what have you. He's got his purple gear on and he's got his... You know, he's got his... He's got his long boots on and purple tights and god knows and everything else and he's got his female uh, emblem on his um on his uh oh, on his medallion thing in jiggy widget but he doesn't die when you uh, defeat him so and there is actually a cheat to be able to play as him as well if you hold a as soon as you defeat him and when you get to this bit and let go then you should be able to play as him when you die although i very much doubt i'm gonna be showing off that cheat because i am planning not to die <laughs> As in, when I say die, I mean obviously lose all your lives and you continue. I would demonstrate um, how much energy the special attack takes off of you when you haven't got your energy bar uh, charged up yet, but there's probably going to be times later on in the game where I will actually have to uh, do that anyway, so... FUCK OFF! See, I'm glad for the, that special attack's existence. And of course we've got Fiona and Electra, whose names weren't changed for the um, for the Western version. At least I assume not anyway. I don't think that whoever translated this um, translated this version, they didn't bother to change the, um, the names over to the Western version because there's no real point in it. As it's hilarious as it is seeing... Right, I want to try something here guys. Ah! What's going on? His fist is disappearing! <laughs> He's not there! <laughs> Part of him's disappearing! Well, to be fair, it's, it's doing that because it um, it had Shiva to uh, deal with. Now, whoever plays Streets of Rage 2 got to the end of it. We all know Shiva. 
I forgot to tell you about that little move as well. When someone grabs you from behind, if you press jump and then uh, attack straight away, you'll be able to throw them from behind. Well, uh, it's either jump then attack or it's attack then jump. One or the other. Get off of me, thank you, Shiva. Now, normally I find Shiva really easy to defeat when I'm using Axel, but when I'm using Rue, it's a slightly different kettle of fish because his attacks are slightly different to Axel's. I like that little uh, special move of Rue's as well. It reminds me of uh, Ryu and Ken's uh, Tatsumaki Senpyo Kaku. And of course, Shiva still says Final Crush in this version. Uh, in the Western version, I don't know what he, it is he says. It sounds like Hijajak! Or something like that. <laughs> okay, I'm not, um, not doing too bad with Shiva at the moment. Final Crush! Tatsumaku Senpyo Kaku! Oh, I'm obviously timing the, uh, the flying kicks quite well, actually. I'm, I'm actually quite pleased with myself. That should be long now. Oh, no! Oh, one more hit scope. Right, now if you hold down B as soon as you beat him, and don't let go of it till the beginning of the next stage, you'll be able to play a Shiva. So that's uh, Rue, with a cheat from the beginning, uh, Ash and Shiva, Three hidden characters, or three other characters, that you can choose to play as. It's brilliant! Right, guys, that brings us to the end of the first video, so thanks for watching, and I'll leave you with the with this cutscene, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>